Hey, welcome to this lesson on segment relationships and circles. You're going to need a piece of paper and something to write with. We have several slides to begin with that you'll need to take information down from. Uh, you'll want to pause the video at each slide. There are five slides in all. Slide one. Slide two. Slide three. Slide four. Slide five. Okay, now that we have that information, in this problem we are wanting to find the value of x and the length of each chord. So we're going to use our chord product property. And so we're going to take, for EF here, the two parts of that chord are the 10 and the 7. We'll multiply those together to get 70. And then we're going to set that equal to the two parts of GH, which are 14 and x. Multiplied together gives me 14x. So I'm going to have 70 equals 14x is my equation. Then by dividing by 14 into both sides, I'll get that x is 5. Now I know the length of x, but I also want to know the length of the whole chords. Well, the length of the whole chord, I'm just going to add the parts. So for EF, I'm adding 10 and 7, so I'm going to get 17 for the length of EF. And for GH, I'm adding 14 and x, but we found x to be 5, so I'm adding 14 and 5, which is 19. In this problem, the art department has created a sketch for a moon that they would like built for a play. And so what they've done is they've drawn a cord, this 18-inch cord, and they've used a perpendicular bisector with it, this 8-inch bisector. Now, what we learned in a previous lesson is that a perpendicular bisector, which will be represented by this 8-inch piece here, uh, will go through the center of a circle if it is the perpendicular bisector of a chord in that circle. And so that is what we have. So the extension of this 8-inch line would have to go through the center of the circle. And so what we do is we take this line and we just extend it out. And we want to find the rest of that to create the circle. So we're going to use that in this equation right here that we're setting up where we have the 8, this piece of the chord, times the other piece. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the 8 and this other piece together are the diameter, D. But this piece over here does not use the 8, so I'm going to remove the 8 from it. So that's where the D minus 8 is coming from in this equation. It's the entire diameter without this 8-inch piece. And that's what's representing this purple segment. And then the other chord that I'm using is the 18-inch chord, and it has been split into two equal pieces, so that's going to be a 9 and a 9, and that's what you're seeing here, the 9 times 9. So that's the setup for, for our equation, and now we'll be able to solve for the diameter by multiplying out. Remember when you have 8 times d minus 8, you're going to have to use the distributive property. So I have 8d minus 64 equaling the 81. I'll add 64 to both sides and then divide by 8 to get my final answer. So that tells me that D is approximately, or is exactly 18 and uh, one, 18 and one eighths of an inch for my um, diameter of the circle, the original circle that they'll need to develop in order to create this moon. All right, here we're going to use our secant rules. And remember, our secant rules say to take the piece of the secant that's outside the circle times the whole secant. And that product is going to equal the same as the other secant, the piece of the secant outside the circle, in this case 7, times the whole secant. So my setup here is going to be 8 times the whole secant, 8 plus x, equals 7 times the whole secant, secant 7 plus 9. So 7 plus 9 is 16. So that's what you're seeing here, the 16 times 7. That's the whole secant times the piece on the outside. And the 8 plus x is the whole secant for GE times the piece on the outside, 8. So I'll use the distributive property here. 8 times 8 is 64, and 8 times x is 8x. And then I'll have my 7 times 16. And so I've got 70 plus 42, or 112. So 112 equals 64 plus 8x. Subtract the 64 and divide by 8. 
So we have that x is equal to 6. We're also supposed to find the length of each secant. Well, finding ED is fairly easy, 7 plus 9 is 16. And then finding EG, I just have to replace x with the 6 that I found, so 8 plus 6 is 14. Okay, in this case, what I have is a secant and a tangent. And a rule that we saw for the secant tangent theorem says that I'll use my secant rule, the piece on the outside times the whole secant uh, is going to be equal to my tangent squared. There's only one piece of it, so I'll just multiply it times itself. So I'm going to have 5 times the whole secant, which is 5 plus 15 or 20, equals x squared. That's my setup. So I have 100 equals my x squared. Solving for x, I'll take the square root. Now remember when you take the square root, you're going to get two answers. You're going to get a plus and minus 10. But because we're dealing with actual links, we can ignore the negative number in this case and only focus on the positive 10. So x is going to be positive 10. Okay, same rule here. Again, I have the secant and a tangent. The secant, I'm going to use the piece on the outside, 7 times the whole uh, secant. And again, the common mistake here is that you look at the whole secant and think that's 7y. It's not 7y, it's the addition of this piece and this piece, the 7 and the y. So it's 7 plus y for the whole length. And that's going to equal the tangent squared, 10 squared. So 7 times 7 plus y is going to equal 10 squared. That's our setup. So I'll use the distributive property here, 7 times 7 plus y, 49 plus 7y, equals my 10 squared, or 100. Subtract 49, divide by 7, and I get that y is 7 and 2 sevenths. Okay, for a little extra credit, four questions here. So this is the first slide with the first two questions. You want to copy these down, bring these to class when you're done with the video. This is slide one and slide two. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.